Um, I'd like to call to order the meeting um, at 6.46, May 4th. Um, the first order of business is to approve the minutes from our last meeting uh, from March. Second. Any changes or discussion? Um, um, so welcome to the end of the season meeting here where we can um, talk about projects and, and ask if anybody is here uh, from previous projects that would like to give any updates on anything that's happened in the past or that's happening now. Um, and there actually is, uh, Jennifer was nice enough to print out some guidelines for proposals here. If you have extra copies, if anybody would like to have one of those for to share them. Um, is anybody here from a previous project? Would you like to give us any updates on that? Um, sure. So I'm Sarah Snyder. If anybody can help me. Um, and I just came to report on the, um, uh, the current um, pathways project. Um, this is our final project, as it turns out. Um, we've been working on a study for of the townwide um, trail system, and um, our focus has been on studying Mount Toby, which makes up you know a good portion of the town, um, and is not, but it's not really connected, well connected with the town. And we were hoping to kind of, now we the town more connected to the river and hoping to connect the town more to the mountain. Um, uh, we're gonna be wrapping up that project very soon. Um, we're gonna be delivering a report and recommendations. Um, we're also gonna be delivering um, comprehensive GIS maps to all the boards and committees um, that they will be useful for planning board, CONCOM. They'll be useful for all future planning for the town and analysis. Any, anybody who's trying to look at um, what to do in the town <laughs> can use these. Um, and we are working with the fire department on possibly, they, they have an interest in implementing a numbering system on the mountain, numbering the intersections as a um, safety measure um, to aid in rescue operations and so on. So we're, we're working with them on that. Um, we were hoping to come out of this project with, you know, like a new initiative or new um, design for improvements to trailheads, you know, but that the town's not ready for that. <laughs> That's what we learned. The town is not ready. Um, the town and what our recommendation is going to be is that the town really needs to kind of reckon with, you know, on a town-wide basis, reckon with how we're going to, the future of of Mount Toby, particularly the roads on Mount Toby. Um, they're right now um, kind of disintegrating. They're not being maintained. Um, and um, if we keep going in the way we're going, those roads are going to become, um, you know, go back to nature, <laughs> basically. Um, and it's a, but it's like, it's way bigger than the pathways committee. It's a question, like if there needs to be like a, a real meeting of minds with the highway department, the fire department, the police department, the water district, the select board, you know, everybody who, it touches a lot of people. Tom, of course. Um, so um, I have sent two emails to the, Select board and town administrator um, requesting such a meeting and have gotten no response. So I just there's it's a it's a very difficult issue to deal with, and I think that's why the town hasn't done anything about it because it's very difficult. Um, and it and it may be that like the doing nothing is 
the strategy that the town wants to wants to take. Um, but hey, Rock. Um, anyway, that's. Um, uh, that's where we landed. We're going to be, you know, giving this report to town, and it's up to the town really to take it, take next steps on it. Um, and I'm also, um, we're our pathways to leadership is going to be winding down with this project. Um, we've accomplished a tremendous amount in our time. I don't know if it's is it seven or eight years. I don't, I don't know how long we've been. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we've gotten very old. <laughs> we've got very old in the process. We kind of aged out of this work. Um, and we also believe that the town needs to transition to a functional parks and recreation committee, which is one of our recommendations. Um, it's time um, because now we have two parks and, uh, you know, we have parks, plural. And like there, there needs to be a kind of broader umbrella tending of of that those assets. Um, but I'd say like um, from when we started, we, you know, we have this wonderful park on the riverfront, and we have all these new sidewalks on South Main, North Main, on One Sixteen, and new sidewalks on um, South Silver, you know, extension to the sidewalks um, and on um, Garage Road and so on. And uh, none of those would have happened without um, what we started with the Pathways Committee. You know, that was kind of the genesis of all of that. Um, and, but the Pathways Committee never happened without the CPA, right? It was all because of CPA that we, we started working on all this stuff we, we never would have done it without so i just i just want to say that like looking back at this frame of time i don't know if it's been 10 years or i'm not sure 11 like cpa has made a huge difference <coughs> to the town huge difference um so I, that's what i have to say Rock, do you have anything to add? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah, for all that. All the work and all the effort yes. that went into all those years that went into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you were saying winding down, mm -hmm. what is that? What, what does that kind of mean? What is that? I think we'll. Oh, for this project? Well, for you were saying that, yeah, I guess. I think like maybe the end, well, hope, I guess I'm aiming for the end of this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other hands to go up with other of their projects? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm, I'm not actually representing a specific project, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so you're ready. Um, so one, two, three, four. No, no, no. Uh, so uh, I, I was thinking of actually bringing different paths to the photography more, but with my different paths, I just wanted to also say how much you know the CPC I has helped so many areas in the town. Um, so I'm a library trustee, and um. You know, you guys funded the, uh, some improvements to the outdoor area, which has been very uh, appreciated and useful. And I um, think that uh, rolled into the last part grant, the kayak shed, which is under construction and, and nearing completion. Um, and uh, one thing I was trying to think of things going forward that maybe, you know, we can continue to think about working on it. Um, one possibility is a collaboration between the library and historical society to help not displace the items at the library. And I think that's going to require some display cases and other um, supporting things. So that that seemed like an area that maybe we could talk to you guys about supporting. Uh, we're also responsible for the Graves Building, which I consider our most precious historical asset. And I know we have some I think, outstanding funds there. And, um, but I think um, 
you know, in terms of preserving his historical things in town. Um, that's uh, an area that we could all be focusing on. Um, but the chair, I am the chair of the Flint Plain North Main Committee, and so obviously you guys had a big part in supporting that project and getting it off the ground. Um, I think something that we could look at as a town is another housing project. And uh, of course, the cozy corner property that comes to everyone's mind, but I think that, um, you know, it was another eight year project, but, um, you know, really, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with how it's coming on. I think it's going to be a huge asset to town residents and to the community at large. Um, I'm also chair of the village center committee, um, and we have been really trying to uh, embark on a visioning. Um, study for the center of town and really focusing on how uh, the particularly any changes to the intersection might um, impact the historic fabric of the town such as it is. Um, and I don't know if there are any potential projects you know, that might overlap <coughs> for CCC funding there, but um, that's there and we've been working on signage for many, many years and have not quite um, Gotten money together to pay for it. We could have some um, village center signing that uh, could be put in place if we had if we had funds for it. And I'm also on the capital planning committee, and I was pleased in looking at the um, charge of this committee that there's actually an obligation to kind of you know check in with each other. And I think along those lines, very glad to see the support for finishing some of the structures in the park. I think that's going to be great to see that get done. And I don't know, just one thing I saw on our list, <coughs> well, um, that maybe uh, is something we can talk to you guys about is the stairs project for this building, which is a historic um, restoration. So that was that, that was my list. And um, again, you know, I think there are, are so many opportunities where, you know, the town just doesn't have other sources of funds, so it's really wonderful to be able to do. Um, of course, where things that we all benefit from. I'm just a wingman. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Those you. stairs already, you know, were up before the for CCA funding years ago. Yeah. And then they kind of got a big project. I mean, <laughs> we need improvements. We need I mean, people have sticker shock with what the estimates came in. Mm -hmm. Sticker shock for everything. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> but there was one like a proposal that was very elegant, you know, like it really gave a nice facelift to the front of the building. I thought I, I, <coughs> I haven't seen the. Um, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I think that came along before we had playgrounds, which were real stretch shock. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the, we, were, we were learning all about sticker shock. Yeah. <laughs> and the playground came along, and that was like a slap in the head. So it's, <coughs> you know, we had another playground for that long. So, so we've learned that things are just expensive. So it's probably a good time to come back. Mm -hmm. I know there was some. Is there an elevation marker there? Or there's some, there's a marker, according to Tom, that's buried in there somewhere. And uh, maybe it's not, but Tom knows it is. So, um, yeah, I think, it, I think it's, there was a flood and it was the high water mark of the flood. That might be what it is. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, Yes. <laughs> I, it's a good transition to me. Yes, I wanted to talk about, I think, the stairs. Um, another potential project, maybe, um, just looking at this building, was the flooring, especially on the wood floor and the steps. My understanding is that the floors may not have been redone since this was an active school. Well, so that's pretty safe to say. Um, <laughs> And, and there are certain areas that are fairer than others. Um, obviously, that would be a bigger project is doing flooring. Um, yes, we'll move everything out to put the floor in. The one. 
Some are worn, water there's some damage. water damage and they're coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that I, I just want to mention that Sarah didn't is that she was instrumental in, in I'm facing the wrong way. The part, you know, the, the building that's going up now, which I encourage you all to take a look at, which is under construction because it's happening, it looks great. Um, so, yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, so the point of the CPA is to support projects in town and that 3% surcharge on our property taxes adds up. And it is for capital improvements and historical preservation, open space protection, and community housing, mm -hmm. and the priorities that are, these are all projects that probably fall under them. Can you tell the, the audience what the, the financial status of the summary projects that have been funded? And there's... Oh, I recognize this. Yeah. <laughs> updated with the last few years on there. Yeah. The color coding is roughly where which category those projects go under so that we're watching. <clears throat> Make sure we're not doing too much in one area and other areas. So, but we still have to reserve or spend 10% of that CPA money each year in each of the three reserve categories. And we have received 100% every year. Yeah, whatever. But Eight I don't know years. if that will continue, Six. but we've said that it's been. not, but we it's kind of remarkable. Yeah. But it's only six other towns in, in the state. Are there. Yes. I don't remember the exact number for this last year, but it was around 10 of the area. So when you say per year, you mean for fiscal year, or you need to come up to the end of this fiscal year by the end of June, or is this by the 2022? Per it's by fiscal year because we budget by the fiscal year and so we all spent for this guy if I have this guy. Well the process is what we went through at town meeting. So the process is the last last Friday in January is when applications are due for funding. And the CPC reviews those and recommends if those projects would go should go to town meeting to decide for funding from the CPA accounts. And then town meeting approves or doesn't approve. And then projects go on until they're done, or we decide they're done. Um, and if they've all been all well managed and wrong. Some take longer than others, but but the budgeting article on this in that town meeting is where we have to reserve 10% of estimated revenues and then United adjustments because the Department of Revenue decides how much we're allowed to put in as a match, and it's been 30 to 35 percent that they've allowed us to put in as a match for that state match because not every town gets 100 percent. Most if towns only have a one percent surcharge, they're only getting that 30 to 35 percent match, and because we have this a three percent surcharge, we qualify for second and third rounds that are given out from that trust fund. Um, and then there's another formula they use based on factors of our socioeconomic status in town, income levels, and principal department of revenue kind of formula um, that helps us be in that 100% match shrinking group. Um, but so large cities have come on to the CPA now, so I'm not expecting it. We keep saying that. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the last two years were not going to happen. Keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to be asking questions. Well, it's important to keep going up with projects that have impact on town because people are charged, being charged 2%. So they want to see mm -hmm. we have an active community that's spending money wisely. So it's important to be out there that if you have projects that you could possibly use help with that makes sense and will help the town 
you don't need to get people to come forward. It's been a little harder during COVID to kind of stir the pot, but um, hopefully there's some normalcy returning to them. But, but we, have, we could certainly use more, we used to get more applications to review. Uh, it's a little quieter. Mm -hmm. Is there a good way to, what are the ways in the past to put the word out for these sort of application deadlines and, you know, inspiring people to kind of perform? There's champions in the room yeah. and beyond who spearhead a project and take it on. Yeah. The design of the CPC committee is to have representatives from the Conservation Commission, Housing, Recreation, Historical, and at large members so that there's reaches out into the community beyond inspired individuals. Um, so uh, and letting those all those committees know and don't read more into this question than can there be public private partnerships or does it have to be public entities? For example, if um elderly housing were done with private for instead of whatever it is, can we still do that? Good. But I'm not sure why you see that as, I mean, it's quasi public, I guess, but probably not in the right direction. 120 North May yeah. feels like a public private partnership. So, but is it with a non profit still? Yeah. I mean, could a bowling alley go into town or whatever and say, hey, we need funds to. Um, no, no, rebuild this building. Uh, I, I think that would go against the state's anti aid law. But there was a public benefit to it. Yeah, it's something we could do. We've seen you know, churches and other historical buildings that are privately owned that have a historical public benefit have used CPA funds for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. So I don't have we just did a steeple repair or replacement or something on their church with CPA money. And so that's, that's, that's the only private building that I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it could be a residence on South Main Street. Right, because those are historical the historical buildings. Buildings, not, not a district, but they're not uh, non profits. The example of the church is actually an excellent one. Um, up front of the member. Um, the, the town has to come away with something from it. So in the case of Hadley, they had to come away with a historic preservation restriction. And so, so the town's holding an easement for a, a restriction against the property if it's investing in it. Well, pick an old building in town and don't please don't read more into this. <laughs> that is just what you're talking about. So there's some building and somebody wants to put out. A bar and or whatever, and so they want some money to fix up the building, put in the bar, and from that the town would then get royalties or portion of the rent. Is that a benefit to the town, or does it need to be a little more history? I think it has to be a perpetuity, so it has to be some kind of restriction or I think for it has to be yeah. 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 It has to meet one of the three or four conditions generative for this. So economic development is not one of them. Yeah, no, it has to be preserving. Well, preserving a building that would otherwise be torn down. There'd be a new bar that's stretching it. Do you want to add to the conversation? Okay. Um, in the housing plan, which hasn't been adopted yet, is that right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, the recently renewed housing plan, in addition to looking for the next piece of land for a project, um, there's also one of the key proposals is the development of a housing trust, very comparable to the con uh, conservation trust that the CPA funds. So I think somewhere in, a, in some horizon, that request can be uh, worthy of consideration so that. Like the conservation commission, the housing committee, or um, you know, a separate committee would be more prepared to you know lock up a piece of land or move forward. So 
much dust in the first day. I just like to second that emotion. Um, and like, oh, oh, two lifetimes ago, I was chair of the housing committee, and um, the big issue with any getting any affordable, more affordable housing is land. Um, we don't. The town has very few pieces of land, and they're, you know, most of them are not appropriate for affordable housing development. Um, and I have the scars to show it. Uh, so, um, the, the, when things come up, I mean, if, if the town has to wait and apply for CPA funds to buy, things, like, wait a year to get the fund, we've lost the opportunity. Um, and the only way we could grab a piece of land is if we already had the funds set aside and that would allow the town to like bid on something in auction or, you know um, you know um, negotiate for i think it's i think it's a very very good idea can you do something in leverage um Ken Kong. Ken Kong, I guess. Yeah. Um, the thing where they were funding, they were basically buying housing. Yeah, I think that they were, they had a housing trust and it was uh, enabling them to buy houses and put a permanent restriction on them for low income purposes. And so they were nimble mm -hmm. and also able to buy individual properties so they didn't have to do giant projects in order to accomplish. You know, providing some kind of low, you know, affordable housing. Yeah, I think the specific condition was also that in for a variety of reasons in that town, it was unlikely that there would ever really be an opportunity for housing development. So they were trying to get rid of it from single family. Yeah, and I think that the Anybody else like to add to the conversation? Would you prefer to get applications earlier in the year and have more time to talk about them? Because it always seems like everyone's scurrying, you know, and for the end. Yeah, we won't really start meeting again until October, the earliest, November, more likely. Um, so that would be the earliest. But uh, for the meeting, when the whole group comes together, the representative that is most aligned with that project could be your partner in working through an application and the details and making it the best kind of application with matching funds and leveraging that CPA money as best as possible, which is the other one of the guidelines, overall guidelines. That can happen anytime. Is there any program in the maintenance that you know it could never be used designed for maintenance? Like this walkway once it deteriorates in 20 years, we fix it for this one. I don't think so because it's already been created and the restriction is already there, so there's nothing new to gain. That would be a maintenance. One foot away from that. <laughs> <laughs> so, only so far, you can start to how we can use the CPA money. <laughs> to be new things. Recreation is expressly not permitted, right? Recreation is it's just not a required reserved area, but it's allowed for capital. Okay, yeah, because I, I remember the piece of projects that had been not here, but in other towns that have been struck, stricken down as not being appropriate, uh, like ball fields kind of stuff. Right? So when the CBA first started, and for about three or four years, recreation was not allowed, okay. but then they changed the law. 
Thank God. Mm. <laughs> we wouldn't have got a park. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, just, so I was trying to think how did they get that park? Yeah, it's no hard way to get funds for that place. Yeah. Yeah. What we need is 524680 dollars of funds for recreation. Roughly. Um, half a million. And but leveraging way more than that with the park grant and other supporting grants for each of those to volunteer efforts the playground and other donated materials and community support, leveraging that three times at least. We need to be focusing on specific projects next year getting um, all the project capital in the last years I mean to make sure there's not enough. We have five million dollars in the pot and the projects were coming to us, then we would think about a different procedure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the CPC is not really the project ideas would like the process to go through. It's so Well, if another housing project comes along, that will uh, take care of the one. There's those aren't cheap projects. Um, so is a housing trust necessary if if the town came forward and asked? CPC for money, what like the conservation commission or the conservation trust did, um, and just said, hey, we'll create a special revenue fund if you know be used for affordable housing. Um, I mean, I know I know the trust is a vehicle that, that can have a certain ability, you know, take by eminent domain things, but is, is there another way to do it? I'm just curious. So. Yeah, I'm probably not the right person to ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the no, spot. No, 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 no. Um, no I, I'm sure there are other mechanisms. The housing trust has the mass general laws behind it and the formation of it and the use of it. It's already right. put together. Oh, or a town, um, seems like a, a town had a separate reserve. The, the goal of that might get lost in time. No, that is sort of statewide state protections around the fund. One more question. So the town hall is your member. 20 years ago, was the minister of putting down or what are we going to do? I'm excited to put out the bid. One of the bids could have been carried out. That was a bid. Blue Heron was the one chosen by the town. Blue Heron is a for profit operation. This wants to be excellent. <laughs> is the preservation of that building a sufficient benefit to the town or not? <laughs> I think so. there, is, there is a CPA state level that so you can you can ask that question. That's a clearly it's a historically important bill of the town. Um, I have a suspicion of the answer, but I think we have what would be suspicion? I don't have anything in mind. Uh, my suspicion suspicion would be is that the town received a historic preservation restriction. On the envelope of the building, like I don't think you can go in and redo the floors of a building like that. But um, like the roof and the house. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Sounds like they have to write a first refusal. Yeah. 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 Who does? The town. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I think from the town's perspective, the two projects that I know of that we'd be considering would be the front steps of the system floors and the building. Yeah, so we're looking at A sidewalk from North Silver Lane to South Park. Then we cover that with the river. Can't do
Can you go to you go to CPC or CPA website and see what what projects have been funded, and we could have give us some notion as to where we were going with this. All the projects for all the towns are listed. There it is. Yeah, certified work. So it's community preservation platform. Most database thing is search by words so and go tree. <laughs> See how which projects funded the tree and picnic table. Get the list if it shows up. Um, but it's dependent on how people put their description in. So. Picnic areas seems like that's a capital improvement to an existing park. Trees, I'm not sure how. That's So I think Amherst used CDA funds to redo the track at their high school. And I'm wondering if they, they must have been, they're totally redoing it. I'm just thinking of the sidewalk thing. It, so it's not maintenance, but they're totally redoing it, but they're putting the same thing in the same place. So I mean, I wonder. As it's a lot more expensive, but you rip up all the sidewalks and they're all, I don't know. I just, then I think it. there's a little, I'd be curious how they frame it, I guess is mm -hmm. my point. But it, it's not new, but there's an existing track, so. Yeah. Kind of did that with the tennis courts at Frontier Regional. The four towns all provided CPA money. Tennis courts at Frontier Regional. Anyone else watches us on FCAT and they have ideas or want to contact us, they go to the website on the town. There's more information there for the guidelines and the application process and how to reach. Uh, thanks, all of you who came to the meeting tonight and shared ideas and thoughts for our next cycle and beyond. Um, and thanks, all you guys, for helping me through all this. <laughs> um, so, unless there's any other thing else to say, we can. Oh, I'm going to